Hi everyone, today let's talk about the inflation data, then we'll take a look at the house bill to avoid a government shutdown, then we'll get into the data, as well as the charts, then we'll look at my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So inflation came in much lower than expected, and that spiked the markets pretty dramatically. We talked about how inflation was going to push markets around in yesterday's video. And sure enough, it came in very soft, and we saw markets rocket higher extremely quickly right on the announcement. Looking at it a little bit closer, we got 3.2 on the headline number. And looking at it by sector, you can see food from vending machines, very high. But all items, 3.2. Food overall, 3.3. Still seeing frozen vegetables and uncooked beef steaks staying very high. Also admission to sporting events and motor vehicle insurance staying quite high. But on that core number, still sitting at 4%. Electricity sitting below that, definitely interesting. And then you always have to look at rent for your primary residence here at 7.2%. That is the biggest expense for most homes, and that continues to sit at a very high level. In terms of the headline number, that's mostly being driven down by gasoline prices. And that is a bit of a seasonality thing. We are getting into the fall and out of the summer. Typically, we see fuel costs taper off towards the fall and winter season. As people tend to do a little bit less driving, there's less demand for that. Looking at the charts here, we can see we are both ticking down now. We kind of thought we were going to come together. That's what we were seeing on the headline number. But now core stepping down and headline number stepping down Everything you would want to see from inflation continues to happen, and this is likely to give us a better probability of continuing to stay at current levels when it comes to rates. Good data means we should stay at a pause, and if the data continues to be good for an extended period, maybe we could see cuts in the first half of next year. And lastly here, they mentioned that energy prices are coming down relative to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. We're starting to see a little bit more of a normalization from that supply-demand disruption. But as Jerome Powell continues to say, we have a long way to go. Moving over to the House bill, they did pass something to stop the government shutdown. And I think this is part of what's driving up markets a little bit here after hours. We're seeing markets tick a little bit higher as we potentially avoid a shutdown with the new speaker, Mike Johnson, passing his first bill in the Republican-led House of Representatives. They're now going to send that measure to the Senate, where it is expected to pass, so there must be some bipartisan support for this bill. And they also mention here Joe Biden has already signaled he's open to signing the bill, which again gives us a lesser likelihood of a government shutdown over the next week. And looking at the tally here, you can see it was 336 to 95, with 127 Republicans joining 209 Democrats, so definitely bipartisan support to some degree, but this was actually Democrat-led, even with the new speaker being a Republican. So interesting to see that here. It seems like he's doing very similar things to what happened to Kevin McCarthy, which did lead to his ouster. We'll see if that continues to be the plan here for the new speaker. But overall, from an economic perspective, it's good to see the government not shutting down, even if ultimately we would like to see them be a little bit more stable on their spending habits and not continue to spend into oblivion. Moving over to the data, GDP numbers came in in line for the Eurozone. CPI numbers all below expectations, exactly what you would want to see. Don't forget tomorrow we do have PPI and retail sales. PPI you would expect to come in below expectations, just like we saw with CPI. But the question here is retail sales coming out at 8.30. That's obviously going to affect markets, and that's going to speak to the U.S. consumer. Is the consumer still strong? And that will speak to the strength of the economy as well. And then we have Atlanta Fed GDP numbers. Not as relevant, but it is interesting to see here at 1130. Moving over to Max Payne, almost 3 million options. We are well above that 440 level. We are well above the top of the puts, which is interesting here. We are all the way up around this 450 level. 455 is the next relevant call strike. And you can see there are basically no puts here, maybe a little bit here at 460. That's interesting. In terms of puts, Max Payne still sitting down at 431, and that close does seem less likely now for the Friday session. But you should keep it in the back of your mind either way. Moving over to the charts, looking at the S&Ps here. This was a bananas run. You can see we're up almost 2% on the day. Massive candle on the announcement, and then we continue to rally. 
throughout the session, chopped a little bit, but really looked clean to the upside. You can see we're up even more after hours. In terms of levels, 448.74 up to 453.07 next level above that 457.57 in terms of structure here we are obviously a much higher high now we're right at these highs going back to 14 september just below the peaks here at the beginning of september we are at trend resistance which is also interesting at current levels next trend resistance for me would be up around 45.50 so that could give you some potential upside there Overall, everything looks good. Looks like we're going to hit overbought conditions on the daily chart. Very close to it, already at 67.79, so just a couple more points, and we could get there. We jumped about six points on the RSI today, so about half of the rally that we got today would get us to overbought conditions on the daily chart. Last time we hit overbought conditions, we did see a slight pullback here in June of 23. We ended up making a higher high. But ultimately, that did not last, and then we did make a much lower low after that. So you do have to keep that kind of stuff in the back of your mind. This can go higher even if we hit overbought conditions, but usually it's not sustainable. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the hour and the day, you can see the same thesis. Rallied up, held this level, rallied some more. Just a little bit of a push during the day, but most of the gains came on the announcement. Over 2% on the day. And we are very close to these mid-July highs. That wick high was right around 387.80. I do have a level here at 389.37. That is my next level to the upside. Realistically, you should probably have one at that candle close, 386.74. But that would be pretty close together, really watching for that previous high. And then zooming out here just to give you some context, this is where we are right now, looking for about another... 6% or so until we would hit all time highs. Candle body closes closer to that 4.75% to the upside. So we are pretty close. Do you have to pay attention to that? If we get into price discovery, that could be quite bullish. But right now, this continues to look like a flag and a breakout, which gives you a lot of opportunity, especially if we continue to get bullish catalysts like inflation data. And then if we get strong retail sales, that could be another indicator to the bull side. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow. The Russell with the biggest move on the day. Almost five and a half percent, five and a half if you include the after hours, massive step higher on momentum and volume. Everything looks super bullish here, pushed right through that 55 EMA. We didn't even have a first test, just pushed right through it on the announcement. Talked about the 144 and 200 sitting at this 180.50 to 181.29 area. Definitely interesting as an area of resistance. But right now, everything looks clean, 179.17 to the upside. And then you have that dynamic resistance above that would be 183.29. Everything continues to break to the upside, so definitely a bull trend for sure. Moving over to the Dow, similar thesis, gap higher, hit that trend and stopped right there, which is interesting. This is a trend line that has been well respected over the last several months. And that is sure enough where we stopped. We are above it here after hours, which is interesting. Next level for me would be 350.92 does seem like we're going to get there. That marks the highs here from the end of August. And then above that, I have 353.62. Everything still looks bullish. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. And you can see we are very close to overbought conditions here on the Dow as well. Not really getting any kind of pullbacks on this colossal rally. Moving over to the equal weights on the daily chart. Momentum bullish, RSI bullish. Volume massive on the day, over 15 million on volume. For reference, yesterday's volume was only 4.1 million. So more than three times the volume here today. Massive catapult right through that 55 EMA, right to this area where we thought we would get some resistance at the 144. And this downtrend line, as well as my level here at 145.08, definitely interesting we push through that tomorrow i have 149.82 to the upside but we are definitely seeing strength across all markets here moving over to apple and tesla apple gapped higher 1.4 percent on the day not bad but it did actually fall after the gap higher which is interesting did get above the level here at 186.81 next one is 189.96 and that and that does mark the high here from the beginning of September that could be interesting above that I have 193.96 going back to almost the all-time highs in fact let's go ahead and throw a level right there at 196.79 right at those wick highs as a potential all-time high break I don't necessarily think we're going to see that on Apple especially with their weaker guidance on earnings 
earnings, but still looks strong from the technical perspective. Tesla, we talked about this breakout here yesterday, held that level, rallied through on the announcement, makes sense. Got to the 144 and my level broke right through that, very close to the 200 now sitting at 240.87. Above that, I have 155.40 if we get that 200 to break. Moving over to NVIDIA and Microsoft, I'll continue to talk about these as they continue to drive markets. Microsoft making new all-time highs, 371.10 after hours. We can, we're well above these wicks here from July. And zooming out here, you can see these July wicks were higher than the November of 21 highs. So clearly price discovery, looking to see where we're going to top out and create some levels. But right now there aren't any to work with on Microsoft. NVIDIA testing these all-time highs. You can see the very tops of these wicks were closer to that 502 level. But realistically, I was watching this 497.57, 497.54 level. We are above that after hours here. Momentum bullish, RSI getting into overbought conditions. And you can see overbought conditions here on Microsoft as well. But again, that doesn't mean that it's going to top out here. It just means that we're a little bit extended. But everything still looks strong and we continue to make higher highs. Moving over to staples and discretionaries. Both of these pushing up much higher. 200 broke on staples. Looking for 70.85 to to the upside after that bullish momentum bullish rsi everything looks good discretionaries rocketing higher with that tesla move tesla was massive on the day and so were discretionaries got above 166.79 that level broke so now you're watching 170.68 as the next potential level pushed right through that zone very quickly on that news announcement which is pretty wide relative to the other ones continues to be relevant here very strong push everything looks clean on both of these to the upside moving over to transports and oil and gas transports having a massive day 3.45 percent rsi momentum everything looks super bullish just like we talked about we were watching this level here at 228.50 right at these tops and these previous bottoms we broke through that level on the announcement continue to rally it's above all the emas and smas now on the daily chart looks super bullish next level here 238.15 Above that, I have 243.37, also a potential area where we could see resistance here. You can see that's a pivot point at this previous bottom at the end of August and the high here at mid-September before we had that continuation lower. Overall, definitely looks bullish. Oil and gas also showing continuation. We talked about wicks at these previous lows and the 200, which so far has held. We hit my level 140.88 and the 9 EMA showed a little bit of rejection. Momentum looks clean. Next level for me, 145.92, but you do have to watch the 21 EMA at 144.74. Everything looks clean to that area, as well as the highly traded zone, 145.16, here on oil and gas. Moving over to breadth, as you would suspect, both of these were massively bullish. Overbought conditions now on the 50-day average, interesting. Above 62.25, next level 77.46. Everything looks clean here. Levels continue to break to the upside. Again, we are overbought. You do have to respect that. Last time we got overbought conditions, pulled back slightly, then rallied up to overbought one more time, and then we had a bigger breakdown. Of course, everything looks super bullish, so you do have to acknowledge that. You can also see some conditions here in August of 22, where we got overbought conditions and then continued higher again, hit overbought conditions a few times here on this rally in November of 22 before ultimately breaking down. So understand we can absolutely go higher, but everything eventually comes back down to earth to some degree. But looking at the 200 day average, we're not overbought quite yet on the daily chart. We are in that zone of resistance though. We did touch my level 49.76, as well as that 144 EMA very close behind it at 50.20. Do you have a level here at 50? Two, these levels are very tight together, so you do have to acknowledge that. And then you have the 200 SMA sitting at 5178. Definitely a zone where I would expect some resistance to come in, but of course, structure is still very bullish. Moving over to the two and the 10 year yield, you can see they had massive bearish days on the announcement. We have all the short term EMAs on the two year looking more bearish, still above the 144 and the 200. So you do have to pay attention to that, sitting at 478 and 465 respectively. But you can see we have a clear lower high, continues to break down. If this low breaks, we would have a lower low. That would be interesting. And then looking at the 10 year here, you can see we made a lower low below the 55 EMA on this candle, as well as the 9 EMA, 21 sitting all the way up at 4.73. 
Everything looks bearish. Next level for me down at 4.35. Moving over to the dollar, as we talked about, this looked bearish going into the day. And sure enough, we got a massive breakdown. Huge move lower on the announcement. Continuation throughout the day took out my 104 level as we expected that to go. And now we're getting close to that 103.64 level at that 144 and 200 SMA. That does seem like an area where we could find some support on the dollar. So we do have to pay attention to that. If we have another big bearish day we hit that levels potentially find some support last time we rallied through tested that level we had a very big continuation if this level breaks however then we are potentially looking for a lot more upside on equities rsi almost into oversold conditions on the daily chart looking at that hourly you can see we are massively oversold sitting all the way down at 12.2 but again daily rsi has a little bit more relevance and if we have another day like today we will hit oversold conditions there Moving over to JNK and TLT, JNK massive gap up, as you would expect, got through that 91 level, hit the highly traded zone, we're right in this previous consolidation. Question is, what happens now? Will we hold in the zone or will we push to 92.50? Definitely interesting. Similarly here on TLT, big gap up, 2.27 on the day, momentum strong, RSI strong, volume on the day pretty good, not as strong as 9 November, but pretty good. We've seen a lot of buying happening at this low. You can see all this volume happening much higher than what we had been seeing even on this down move. Seems like people are establishing positions at these lows and looking for this bigger move higher into the 100 area. Got the 144 sitting at 96.26 just before my level at 96.50. Might see some resistance in this previous consolidation around 93. But right now everything looks pretty strong on bonds. Moving over to volatility, we are not really seeing what you would expect here. Volatility continues to stall in this area. Momentum continuing to tick towards bullish. RSI still bearish, which is interesting. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. We'll see how it continues to hold up in this zone. This is not really what you would want to see looking for that continuation. And you can see the move index barely moved at all, continues to tick towards bullish on momentum. RSI holding above that 50 line, not what you would want to see on volatility if you're looking for that bullish continuation. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I came up just a little bit short of $1,000 on the day, so a little bit less than 1%, which is pretty tough, especially on a day where we see massive moves to the upside. But not bad, considering that I had some pretty tight covered calls on. I was able to capitalize on about half of the move, which is good. Looking at my IWM position, I rolled up pretty strongly for tomorrow at 178. We're seeing aftermarket prices go up a little bit higher, so looking to make about $90 on that position tomorrow. We'll see how that continues to play out. Q's positions, I rolled out on that first call. 378 now for $7 credit. We're basically at max profit there already. Now I have to wait all the way until the 20th for that money to come in. And then I rolled out to 14 days again here, 375 for $11 credit. So max profit there, 386.85. So I have a little bit of upside potential there, but not much. Overall, everything looks extended still just like yesterday. But as long as we continue to make new highs and break levels to the upside, you do have to be on board with that rally. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of the inflation data. Will it continue to taper off or will those hot sectors continue to stay hot? and potentially look for a re-spike in inflation. That could be interesting. Also, let me know what you think of the government and the likelihood that they're going to stave off another shutdown. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video, and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading, and have a great day.